Heck no, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> okay, quite a few of you. Well, maybe by the end of this, you'll either like be confirmed that you never want to do it again, or maybe you'll have to change your mind. I don't know. Um, so, uh, again, I'm Ashley, and I'm a registered nurse, also called RN for short. Um, and a little bit more about me is I grew up here in the Mesa area. I went to Red Mountain High School. Um, and straight after high school, <laughs> straight after high school, I went to ASU and pursued nursing there. Um, I married. My husband's in the military. He's deployed right now. Um, and so, <laughs> yay for him being in the military, not yay for him being deployed. Um, and uh, we've got two dogs, two cats. It's just me by my little lonesome but until he's back in a couple weeks. So. Um, anyway, so I want to kind of talk about why I chose nursing um, versus something else. So um, I've always kind of been interested in the healthcare field, um, but for a while I wanted to be a doctor, and I was pretty set on being a doctor until about my junior year in high school. I uh, just kind of had this switch of realize that uh, being a doctor is not really what I want to do. Doctors, you know, have to spend a lot more time in school. Um, and it's a lot of work, not that I'm afraid of hard work or anything, but, um, and um, they're just more, doctors more so make decisions and are only with patients for a, you know, a few minutes and then they're out of the room. And I wanted to be the one that was at the bedside, hands on, getting involved in the action, you know, doing compressions for CPR, pushing medications, starting IVs, and just being hands on and involved. And that appealed more to me. So I decided, you know, I will pursue nursing. Um, kind of a funny little story to show that I've always been interested in the medical field is uh, when I was younger, um, I'd always watch medical shows. And my mom tells a story in particular where I was like seven years old and I was uh, sitting in front of the TV watching like a show of a guy getting a 200 pound tumor removed from his abdomen. And she was like, you're just sitting there with wide eyes watching the show. You know, most normal kids are watching cartoons and things like that, and now I was watching crazy medical shows. So I've always been interested in it and um, decided to do nursing. So kind of how to become a nurse. Um, uh, there's kind of two routes to get your RN. Either you get your associate's degree, or ADN, what we call it, or your bachelor's degree, or BSN. So I got my bachelor's degree. Both allow you to get your RN afterwards, so you still be, have the same job, just two educational groups. So um, I decided to do nursing and um, applied at ASU to do the nursing major. And my first few semesters were just prerequisites, English, math, anatomy, physiology, all those things. And you had to maintain a certain GPA in order to apply to the actual nursing program. So even though you're doing the nursing major, you didn't hold those that high enough GPA, you may not even get into the nursing program. So I obviously got in. Um, and then in the nursing program, it's you know very different from your traditional classroom setting. Some days you're spent in the classroom studying, lecturing, things like that, learning. But then the next day you could be at your simulation center, like using doing mannequins, practicing IVs. And then the next day you're in the hospital setting, you know, actually, you know, practicing the things that maybe you just learned the day before. Like maybe you just learned how to start an IV, and then the next day you're at the hospital practicing on someone for the first time. You never tell them it's your first time though, because no one wants to be stabbed with a needle by someone that's never stabbed anyone with a needle before. Um, so it's just very, very different educational setting, being hands-on. Um, and I'm a 10th person, I like to be in on the action, so I, you know, like nursing school. Um, anyways, I graduated August 2015, and once you graduate with your nursing degree, yay, you have a degree, but no, you can't work as a nurse yet. So you have to actually take um, your uh, registered nurse's license test. It's also called the NCLEX, the National Licensure Exam. And um, so you take that, and then you can become an RN. So kind of a funny story. Right after I graduated from college, I moved, like two days after I graduated, I moved up to Washington, because that's where my husband was stationed out of. And we um, had been long distance for a while, so we're like, yay, we can live together now. Moved up to Washington, um, up, got my test dates, take the NCLEX right when I got up there. 
and um, I lived in a super, super rural area, so I had to drive three hours to the test center. My test was at 8, I woke up at, you know, who knows, like 4 o'clock in the morning, left at 4.30, and drove three hours to the test center. My test took 40 minutes, and then I drove three hours back home. Obviously, I passed, but kind of a funny story that I spent all this time for this one exam, and it took 40 minutes. That is what determined my career. <laughs> so I got my license. And my first nursing job was up in Washington at a very rural hospital. I worked on a medical surgical floor, also called med surge for short. It's just a very general adult health floor. So people that are sick that need to be in the hospital, but they're not, you know, like actively, actively dying that's super, super sick. So, you know, people with like pneumonia, uh, maybe they just got diagnosed with diabetes or they have an infection that need IV antibiotics, uh, appendicitis, things like that. Um, and I managed four to five patients and got really good at time management because you have obviously have a lot of patients you have to keep um, in line kind of you know the different patients you don't want to be confusing their medications or confusing you know what they're there for and so got really good at time management but I knew when I started that job that that was not going to be my forever career um, I am an adrenaline seeker so I knew I wanted something a little more intense I was just up in Washington for the year and then I moved back to Arizona. Before I moved back, I started applying to emergency room jobs and ICU or intensive care unit jobs. Uh, I got a job, I interviewed and got a job offer for an ICU position at Banner Desert, which is like really close to here, um, for their medical surgical floor. And uh, obviously, I got the job and I've been working there for the past six months. So I love what I'm doing right now. Um, critical care, it's fast paced. You really have to know your stuff and be you know quick to think and react to your situation. I have two patients usually for a typical day, um, and that's because they're sicker than obviously my previous job. You have to be able, available to to monitor them super closely. These are patients that are on life support, you know, breathing machines. Um, they can be like on dozen medications all at once, all IV medications going in. They've got central lines and IVs and catheters and you know dialysis lines and just a bunch of things involved in this patient's care. Um, we also can do one-to-ones if the patient's really sick, one nurse to one patient, so your sole attention is dedicated to them. Or sometimes there's two-to-ones where there's two nurses to one patient if they're really, 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 really sick. Um, and so yeah, I love what I'm doing now and um, that's kind of my little background experience. And, um, some pros and cons of nursing. Um, there's definitely lots of pros. One of the pros is um, I work three days a week, 12 hour shifts. So I work 7 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. on the day shift. And um, so I have more days off during the week than I actually work. But on the days I work, I'm literally gone like basically 14 hours because I work the whole day. Um, so that's nice. Um, my job allows us to schedule ourselves, so it's pretty flexible if you needed to be off for an appointment or just wanted to schedule yourself to have, you know, six days off to go on a trip. Um, you can do that as well. Uh, there's not that you guys probably are into this right now, but you will be benefits for being nurses, you know, health insurance, dental vision, 401k plans for retirement, things like that, which are all very important in the adult world. Um, <laughs> So they offer that. Uh, nurses make decent money for having either a two or four year degree. Um, it's higher paying than a lot of degrees are right outside of college. Um, new grad nurses at Banner, so the Banner Health System, I can't speak for all hospital systems here, but um, they're pretty much similar. So new grad nurses, meaning you have zero experience, you just graduated, you're starting as a nurse, make like 27, 50 an hour. Um, and then if you work night shift, you get 18% differential if you, are certified in certain areas, you can make more money every year. You get an evaluation. If you do well, you make more money. So um, there is, it's a great career to grow in, um, not just like personally with learning, but financially as well. And then obviously any overtime that you bring in, if you pick up an extra 12 hour shift, um, that's time and a half. And so you're making a lot more than your normal hour rate. Um, another pro is just the amount of jobs in nursing. Um, not just in the ho hospital setting, you know, even in the hospital, you've got ER, ICU, you have general floors, you have radiology, all these different areas. But outside of the hospital, if you wanted to maybe work at a pediatric doctor's office, or if you wanted to work at an eye doctor's office, or um, if you wanted to be a flight nurse, 
uh, or a, a nurse on an ambulance, or if you want to do travel nursing where you are going to different states every couple months or out of the country or third world uh, nursing, um, if you wanted to be a teacher, a nurse teacher or educator, or if you wanted to be more on the management research side of nursing. So even if bedside nursing isn't your thing, there's so many other ways that you can work with people and be in the nursing role without you know, doing what I do, so to speak. So those are some pros. I would say the, the biggest con of nursing is that it is physically and emotionally draining. It is a lot, um, especially in the ICU, I see people that are literally like this close to dying and or do die. I see a lot of people die. I see a lot of people um, who are just very sick, things that no one should have to see. I've seen people bleed out. I've seen people die that shouldn't die. I've seen people that live that shouldn't have lived. And um, just, you know, it's uh, emotionally draining. Those shifts I go home and I, I cry because I'm just, it's just so sad, some of the things I see. But at the same time, it's so rewarding and so fulfilling to know that I am that person that is dealing with, not dealing with, that sounds bad, but working with this patient and the family on the worst, potentially worst day of their lives. No one comes to the hospital for fun. Well, there's a select small percentage of people that do. And some people come, you know, they're giving birth, that's an exciting time. But most of the people are coming because they're really sick and, um, or they're suicidal or something traumatic has happened in their life. They got in a car accident or things like that. And so, that obviously brings a lot of emotions and I feel honored as a person to be trusted with um, communicating and listening and being involved in that patient's care to hopefully make their stay better. Whether it's a positive outcome like the patient gets better and goes home or maybe the patient passes away and I can be that person to be emotionally available for patients and their families. So um, that is probably the, the main con, it's just some days are very hard but also super rewarding at the same time. So those are pros and cons. Um, so my YouTube channel, this is the really what, reason why I came, I just wanted to get more subscribers. Um, <laughs> just kidding. So um, I have a YouTube channel that I started um, in nursing school. Um, it was like my third semester in, I had like two semesters left and uh, just decided to start it actually like two years from this exact time because it was my spring break and I was uh, bored on my spring break and I'm like, why not start a YouTube channel? So I was doing makeup videos and recipe videos, like military advice videos, all types of things. And I had one nursing video I did called How to Survive Nursing School that gained a little more popularity than my other videos. And so over time, I had one of my buddies I met through uh, YouTube who also did nursing videos. He's like, Ashley, you should stop doing those other videos and just do nursing videos. And I was so like upset and offended at first. I was like, how dare you? <laughs> tell me what I should be doing my YouTube channel. I can do whatever I want. And for a while I was like, I'm gonna do whatever I want because I like all these things, so why not do videos for these things? And um, after a while I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do nursing videos. That seems to be why people are subscribing to my channel. And um, so now there's close to like 19,000 people on there um, that follow my channel. I do advice videos and um, talk about my experience or journey, um, educational videos, and really have just formed this community of people who are um, just like you guys who maybe are interested in nursing um, or people who are in nursing school and can just go there to talk about their experience or ask for advice and things like that. So um, it's been kind of like my, it's like my hobby, but it's also kind of like my part-time job outside of nursing and um, I love it. So anyways, uh, go subscribe, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can if you want, but uh, yeah. So third, fourth quarter, we're probably gonna do those points again before we do like millions so if you take out your phone right now, you call us. I just don't know. Ashley, why do they want to follow you? Why do you want to follow me? Because um, look at me, I'm awesome. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, I have people that follow me on there um, that are you know, high school students. I have people that follow me that are, have been nurses for 20 some years. I have doctors that follow me. Um, anyone who's, maybe your mom's a nurse and they're just interested in nursing, you know. Um, and people follow me just because they like to hear what I have to say, even though they don't care about nursing. So, you know, it just really depends. But um, I have lots of haters that follow me too. So you can go be on the anti-hater crew. <laughs> 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 
it erases me what people say on the internet. But anyways, so. Nice. <laughs> I want a million points. I want a million points. You get a million points. You, you get a million points. Does anyone have any questions or you know specific things that you want to ask you about me personally or nursing or college or anything? Another million points for a good question. Okay, let's see. <laughs> 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 to gain like. 10 million like subscribers, will you like shift more to YouTube than your nursing then, job? That's a great question, actually. I have uh, a lot of people have asked me, like, you know, if this became financially enough to support you, like, would you do that? And at this point, I don't think so. Who knows in the future? I mean, I feel like being a nurse is like such who I am as a person, like, such a big part of me. And to totally give that up and just focus on YouTube. One, I feel like how could I offer advice on a nursing channel if I'm like not even a nurse anymore? I feel like people wouldn't really respect that as much. Um, but you know, maybe in the future I would maybe work less shifts or something and just focus on this. Um, but for now, I'm happy with what I'm doing and just want to keep doing it. Yes. How do you manage your time? Sorry. Reading nursing books. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So I, like I said, I have I would just work three days a week, so I have four days off. Um, my husband's gone, so I don't have, you know, that sounds bad, but that person occupying my time, and I don't mean that in a negative way, um, but, you know, I'm pretty much by myself, and I do this partly to keep busy. Um, I also do, I have other hobbies I like, you know, I like hiking and cooking and things like that. Um, but uh, I guess I don't have a specific way I manage my time, I just feel like you make, you make priority for things that are important in your life, in all aspects of your life, whether it's school or your job or your family. And um, this is obviously something that's important to me. It's not the most important thing in my life, um, but uh, you just make, you sacrifice and make time for things that are important. So. Any other questions? <laughs> about college, about what it's like to be in there. Is it really stressful? Is it stressful? Yeah, I I literally, at the job I do, I literally have people's lives in my hands. I could literally go and turn off my medication and they would die. So it's stressful in that aspect that you really have to know what you're doing and you have to be careful and you have to double, triple, quadruple check yourself to make sure that you're doing things, you know, appropriately and correctly um, because you have a large amount of responsibility. So yes, it's stressful, but I kind of like live off of that you know, thrill and that stress of knowing that I have such power, <laughs> such control. I mean, that sounds bad, but like, I like, I've always been a very like independent leadership type of person. And so in the ICU, we have a lot of autonomy. We work very close with doctors. They respect our opinions because we're so in tune with our two patients and so involved that if I come to a doctor and say, hey, this, this, and this is going on, they'll be like, all right, do this. Or I'll go to them and be like, hey, this is going on. I already did this. And they'll be like, okay, whatever. <laughs> like, that's fine. Um, so we have a little bit more um, leeway, so to speak, in the ICU just because, like, I know if a patient has chest pain, I know I'm going to order these labs and do this test and this test and this test. And then I'll go to the doctor with the results. Whereas most areas, if a patient has chest pain, you have to call the doctor, get the orders for those tests, and then you know, do that. But in ICU, it's like, I'm not wasting time. If you've got this, I'm going to order this, and then I'll tell the doctor that I, what I did. But mo in most worlds, doctors have to just order everything. You can't just do something without an order. Okay, next question. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, if you were to be a doctor, what doctor would you have to I was so set on being an OBGYN, like, before I decided to be a nurse. And then when I decided to become a nurse, I wanted to be a labor and delivery nurse. And I did my labor and delivery rotation um, in college, and I, I loved it. It was great. Um, but I realized that I just am such an adrenaline seeker. And even though you do see those situations in labor delivery, um, it's not as much as, like, what I see. It's different from what I see. And um, so I just realized that like, that was more my forte, so to speak. But I really, I still like OB nursing. I you know, think it's wonderful and awesome. And, um, who knows, maybe one day I'll do it. But uh, for right now, I really like ICU. 
ask more if you want to like make use of this time. Yeah, I'm like I'm already here. You might as well just like. Maybe. And if you guys think of questions after class, or maybe there's something you're like too scared to ask, yeah. on my YouTube channel, you, all my social media is there. You can comment, ask me questions, email me, I have a website, all those things. Um, and you can reach out to me. I get asked a ton of questions every day, and I get a ton of emails and comments. Um, and I read them all, but I don't respond to everyone. Um, but if you say like, hey, I saw you at Lisa High, and I have this, this, this question, I will respond to you. Um, just because, obviously, I, you guys are like, yeah, Pina. Have I done one at school? No, and actually I'm recording right now, so you guys will be on a YouTube video. Oh, that's really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh follow my Instagram. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, I haven't done anything. Yeah. Like this before. Put a million <laughs> has to be a good question. Have you pulled the plug before? Oh, I was going to ask that. So, um, do you mean like intentionally? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, sometimes we'll have patients who, they're just not going to get better. There's like statistically, medically, like they, everything is just failing. They're not going to get better. They have the breathing too big. We don't like go up to the wall and just, okay, oh, no. you're done. <laughs> um, but, Patients or their families may decide, you know, there's no quality of life, there's no potential for life, let's withdraw care and make them comfortable. And so we have certain orders and protocols, um, everything gets basically discontinued and we just have pain meds, anxiety meds, things like that for comfort, things that keep them comfortable. And um, when the family's ready, we will um, take the breathing tube out and most, most people don't just like stop breathing right when you take the tube out, most people die like you know it could be a couple minutes or it could be days who knows um, but most people still breathe even when you take the breathing tube out depending on the situation but so we do we do take the tubes out we do make people comfort care when they're ready when families are ready we don't just say oh you decided to withdraw care okay take the tube out it's it's a process you know and really it's it's all up to the, the family members and when they're ready Yes. Uh, is there any job in the medical field you wouldn't like be like would be willing to like do? Would be willing or wouldn't be willing? Would it, what? Would it be willing? Would it? Yeah. Um, I do not want to ever do psych, and um, I did a psych rotation, and I learned a lot from it, but it's just not my forte. And I respect nurses who do psych tremendously because one, they do that job, so I don't have to do it, and two, um, it's just. It's just not something that personally interests me. I do get a lot of psych still. It doesn't matter what field of nursing you're in, you're going to get a lot of psych. You're going to get people with um, anxiety or depression or suicidal or things like that. So you do have to know how to work with um, patients who are maybe actively withdrawing from alcohol or um, have psychosis, things like that. But obviously in psych, that's all you see. And then when we get it in the ICU, we've got a whole lot more um, meds, things like that too. You know, Help with the situation, and uh, so I do get psych, but in smaller doses. I just couldn't do it all the time, and I respect people who do it all the time a lot because it's not for me. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, there's really no other field in nursing that I absolutely hands down to be like, nope, I'm not doing. Any other questions, comments, life stories, concerns? Yes. Uh, did you have to do the Hippocratic of Hope? The, like what doctors do? Yeah. Is no. it the same with nursing or is it just like more of the other stuff? No, we know? don't, no, we don't do the actual oath or anything oh. like where they swear into whatever they say. <laughs> but I mean, when you, I mean, technically by being a nurse, you're, as a nurse, if something is doing harm to a patient, if it's an ethical issue, I've had situations where we're keeping someone alive that should not be kept alive and that sound maybe that sounds terrible to you guys but there comes a point where someone can't breathe on their own they um, were artificially feeding them through a tube they can't move any of their arms or legs they can't speak they um, are not responding maybe neurologically and for most people and not everyone obviously at that point we would decide you know what 
it's their life, not that their life is not worth it, but they have lived their life and the quality of life that they would have afterwards is nothing. The person that they were, they're not anymore, so to speak. And um, so, what was I saying? What? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I don't I forgot where I was Same. going with this. <laughs> um, oh, oh, okay. So yeah, now I remember. So if there's a situation like that where a family's like, no, let's keep them alive, keep them alive, keep them alive, keep them alive, but now it's running into this grayer area. Like, okay, we're keeping them alive, but we're actually doing them harm by keeping them alive. Like this is basically torture, so to speak, or doing a bunch of these tests and poking them and all these things when they have no quality of life. So that becomes an ethical issue. Um, and as nurses, we can bring up that to the ethics committee. We can call and be like, hey, this is an ethical issue. But usually it's a doctor's decision whether they continue. You know, doctors can be like, I'm not getting involved in this person's care because I don't want to say there's no point, but I don't ethically believe that's a good question. All right. So we can ask more questions, or we have thought about doing a mannequin challenge for a video. You guys want to do that? No? Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. Can we get more pumps? <laughs>